So I have here a little garter stitch swatch and I've dropped three stitches. I found the stitches, I put them on pins and one of them is two rows down and two of them are three rows down. And the way I can tell that is by the number of yarn bars. Also, interestingly, the bars are not all in the same place. They're on opposite sides. If I had dropped these stitches and then kept knitting, I might not have such baggy bars here, but I purposely dropped them <clears throat> in the middle of this garter swatch. So you can see this stitch that has the blue pin on it, this bar, is still going through that stitch, but it's not going through the other two. And that's how I know this stitch is down two rows. These two stitches are not going through that bar. They've got three bars, and that's how I know they are down three rows. So I have two pieces of helpful equipment here. I have my handy dandy crochet hook, and I like to use a hook that's really smaller than what the yarn calls for, but not too small, so I can't, um, so I'm not able to hook the yarn, but um, I've got one that's a little bit smaller than what the yarn calls for. I also have two um, broccoli rubber bands, and I'll show you how I'm going to use those. I need to move to where the drops are, so I'm taking my other needle, and I'm just going to slide these stitches over. Nothing fancy, just moving them from needle one to needle two, like so. So I'm at the space where the drops are. As I'm working on the drops, I tend to ignore what's happening with my needles. And so I don't have any needle caps, but I want to put something on these so that my stitches, these stitches that are the good ones, don't drop off while I'm working to pick up the others. And so that's how I use my, um, broccoli rubber bands. They make good needle ends. It doesn't have to be real tight. Just wrap it around enough so that those stitches are not going to fall off while I'm working. These also work if you have um, a set of double point needles and you wanna stack them all together to put your work away. They're big enough, they fit around multiple strands of, of needles. Okay, so the tricky thing about picking up with garter stitch, so I'm going to put my dropped stitches on my hook and then I'm gonna pull that bar through the stitches. And the tricky thing with garter is that you have to alternate the direction in which you pull the bar through to create garter. If it's stockinette, you just work from the smooth side and you just ladder, ladder, ladder up Stockinette's pretty easy to bring up the stitches. Garter is a little harder because you have to switch. So I'm going to start with the one that's on the blue hook and it only, or it only needs two bars to go through. And so to figure out how I have to put my hook in there, I have to see how the yarn went through on the last stitch. So if I look at my dead stitch, my dropped stitch, it is coming through the stitch below it toward me. That means that the next bar has to go in the other direction. So it means I'm gonna to have to flip my work over. And if you do it wrong, if you um, pull it in the wrong direction, it's not the end of the world. You'll just get one flat stitch before you start making your garters. But if you wanna get it right the whole way, um, this would be the way to do it. So I'm pulling it through to the other side and I'm gonna flip my work over. The other thing that's a little tricky is keeping your bars organized, okay? So I need to figure out I'm going to, um, yeah, I need to figure out which yarns need to come through. And so if I look, I 
I'm thinking I didn't drop this one down as much as I thought. I think I only dropped it down. Um, this one only went down one. The other two went down three, but I think this one only went down one. So it only has one yarn that has to be pulled through because this yarn bar is already making a stitch. This yarn bar is already making a stitch. This one is not. Okay, so again, I'm gonna, um, I'm gonna take my hook off, my pin off, and I need to put my, I need to go underneath the bar that I'm gonna pull through, and I need to go through my stitch like so, and then I'm going to pull that bar through. So instead of trying to get these guys back onto my needles right now, I'm gonna just put this back on a pin. And after I've worked all of them up, then I'll put them back on a needle. So one thing that sometimes happens is things get a little bit crunched up. So you can see this column of stitches now has three stitches made there. So this one is complete. But sometimes these bars get sucked up into the stitch and then you don't have enough bar left for your other stitches. Um, so I, I kind of snug that up a little bit. Okay, so on to this guy. So again, if I analyze this, the stitch that's on the pin has been pulled through the loop toward me, which means the next bar needs to be pulled from the other side. So I'm going to flip over to the back of the work. I'm gonna take the pin through because I wanna be able to get to it from the back side. Since these guys are in the same place, I'm gonna pull that one through as well because it'll need to start out on that side, okay? So here are my three bars and you can see them in order this one's going to be first second third so this first bar i'm going to pull through toward the back after i flip it over the second bar i'm going to pull through toward the front so i'll have to flip it over again the third bar toward the back all right so let me flip it over working on this one and i like to work on them in order just to keep the um, yarn bars kind of snugged so i'm going to take this guy off the hook carefully put the crochet hook through it and again, I have to be careful to make sure I get the correct bar, all right? I have three bars, they're all on the other side, which makes it just a little bit challenging. I have to go underneath and I'm just gonna look from the back and my needles are really in the way. My working yarn is in the way. So here's my My bottom bar. All right, I'm gonna flip it back over to look just to make sure. Blue stitch is in the way. All right, there's my three bars. So the one I need to get is this one. And the other bars are, are kind of shrinking up because of that, that stitch. So I need to get this one. So let me just flip back over so that I can see it. And I have a lot of stuff to go underneath there to get to it. There it is. I'm gonna pull it through the stitch. And then here comes the tricky part because the next bar I have to pull through in the other direction. So that means I'm gonna have to take my hook out of the stitch and flip it around and go through from the other side. All right, I can see the second bar, it's right here. And so I'm gonna get that one and pull it through the stitch. Third bar is right here and it needs to go through the other way. So instead of flip flopping my work a lot and having my needles get in the way, I'm just gonna kind of hold on to it like so. I have to go under the bar that I'm gonna use through the stitch. The bar needs to kind of get over the stitch so that I can pull it through the stitch like so. It's a little ugly right now, but now the second stitch is done. My pin went flying, so I'm gonna grab that. Okay, blue stitch, first orange stitch are done. Second orange stitch is still hanging out back there. The bars are hardly noticeable now because they are getting sucked into those stitches. But there's one bar. It was the last one that I took through the orange marker. And here's the second bar. 
and here's the third bar. So these three bars of yarn have not been taken through that final orange stitch. All right, so here I am back again on this side. So if I look at this, this loop was pulled through the stitch away from me. So here's the stitch below, the loop is coming out going away from me. So that means the next one I'm gonna pull toward me. So this one's in position, I had already pulled it under to get it in the right place. So I'm gonna get my hook in there, take the pin off, and now here comes the trick again of finding that bottom bar. So if I kind of flip my work back over, get everybody out of the way, here are my three, I'm in my stitch, here are my three bars, one, two, three. So this lower bar is the one that I wanna pull through the stitch. So I need to do just a little bit of wrangling there. So the bar needs to get kind of beyond the stitch so that I can pull it through. So I'm doing a little finagling there with my fingers. Okay, so I got it through. The next, the next one has to go through the other way. So I'm just gonna grab that stitch with my fingers, take my hook out, and put it back through in the other direction. Ah, drop my stitch. Like so. All right, and here are my bars. Again, they're getting shorter because it's just one stitch, but there's one bar, there's the other one. I want this one. And you can kind of see it's the away bar and it's away because the yarn's in the back when you're knitting. So I'm gonna pull that one through. And then this is the last bar I have to pull through, but I have to go the other way. So, hook off, passing through the loop the other way. The bar needs to get up and over the stitch so that I can pull it through. And there it goes. So this, this whole maneuver thing is not like crocheting really. The crochet hook is just a tool to kind of hold things for me. Um, pull things for me, etc. It's not a fluid motion like crocheting. So these stitches are now all fixed and they are ready to go back on either needle. So my, my working yarn for this project is over here. So ideally I'll put them on this needle and then slide those others over and then I'm ready to knit. So I'll take the rubber band off of this guy and then I'm gonna move them on one at a time. Ideally, the stitches are leaning the way you see this one going. They're not leaning this way or this way. They're leaning, um, it's kind of like a cowboy sitting on a horse. So the leg that's toward you is to the right of the leg that's behind you. If you don't get them on twisted correctly, it's not the end of the world, but um, if we want to do everything perfect, we'll get them twisted that way. Okay, then this guy, I'm going to kind of tug him up. And he's going to go on like so. And one more guy. I'm going to pull him up. And I'm going to go behind him to get him twisted. If I went this way, he'd be sitting the wrong way he'd be slanted toward the left instead of toward the right so i'm going to go behind him to get him slanted toward the right these are all boy stitches they were naughty they're naughty boy stitches so i've recreated garter stitch i've got bumps 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 everywhere so i got everything weaved through correctly we'll take the other one off move those stitches over and i'm ready to go so that's how you bring up drop stitches in stockinette. Again, the trickiest thing, I have one that doesn't look right, right here. I don't even know if that was one of my drop stitches. I may just have something twisted wrong there. Um, you know, in the overall scheme of things, I probably wouldn't worry about it, but it does look like that one might be twisted the wrong way. So I might drop down and try to fix that. Um, and twist it back around. But if I were to continue my work like this, I think I'd probably be mostly pretty happy with it. But yeah, that one, this one, I, I worked the last bar through the wrong way. That might've been the first one I did. Let's see. 
see how quickly I can fix that. And then I gotta stop my video. And you can see like if I pull down, all these stitches have a nice um, V right under the needle. That one doesn't, that one's a naughty stitch. So if I pull, drop that out, I think that one just needs to be pulled through the other way. I pulled that last one through wrong. Oops. There, that looks better. Now I have bumps on the back and a smoothie on the right, so I think I got that right now. So I'll just move them all back and now I'm ready to knit. There, much better. Some of it is a little stretched and you know, that all kind of fixes when you the, you know, you can tug yarn strands away, to, but now all the loopies are sitting the right way.